Hey guys, it's Biggs. I got somebody special again today for our Aquatic Masters Series. We're at the Keystone Clash, and I was able to take this woman and get her into a small little area where you could have a little discussion. You probably know who this ginger is. This is Jennifer Williams. She's you one of North American. Hmm? You can call me Jen. I know you as Jen. They don't know you as Jen, no? They should. Oh, they should. It's going to be a household name, guys. Yeah. But Jen is a, an absolute legendary in North America, soon to be global aquascaper. Wow. And uh, Biggs is not an aquascaper. <laughs> Biggs has really? kept cichlids. Biggs has no concept of how to do anything small because <laughs> he's big. And uh, Jen's going to talk about all sorts of facets of aquascaping. She's got a bunch of sneaky tricks up her sleeve. She's going to tell us everything we ever needed to know to aquascaping in five minutes. Not going to happen. No? No. All right. How did, how did you get into this? I kept fish from a young age, young age, but, yeah. you know, barbs, etc., and whatever at the, the fish store. Never any plants. Back then, I'm not that old. Back then... <laughs> <laughs> I <wasn't>, am. <laughs> there wasn't all of the uh, options that we have today. Um, and then... Yeah, that's very true. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we just didn't have it. There wasn't anything there. We had the little plastic uh, fil bubble filters that we stuffed the poly filter in, and maybe you'd have a layer of She carbon. said she wasn't old, but yes, she's talking about a <laughs> corner filter, which the kids today would have no concept of what it is. Jen, did you have a I'm VCR in your house? I may have, yes. I may even She's remember. old. Before VCRs. <laughs> Anyhow, um, and then I was in my apartment and I had a pair of convicts. No, fire mounts. They're not convicts, fire mounts. And you have a pair and you have 5,000. And I didn't know what to do with them, so I put a. You were on the right path. <laughs> I you was. Mean, you, that's called divergent evolution, I believe. You went the wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> I disagree. Um, so I put an ad in Craigslist that said, um, Fire mouse cichlids, bring a bucket and a net, and you know, got all sorts of people showing up at the house. And I was like, this is probably dumb, really dumb idea. <laughs> single hindsight. single woman selling right. peddling fish out of her door to strangers. Right. What could go wrong? No problem. <laughs> and so this big army guy shows up at my doorstep, and that was when I really questioned my uh, motives here. And uh, he just comes in, and he starts scooping these fish out. He's like, you ever heard of this Amato guy? I was like, huh? <laughs> but and I had, yeah. and he starts yammering on about how. Yeah, unless back then, unless you kind of stumbled onto it by right. reading a book or right. the internet wasn't as prevalent really no. there, you know. No. You'd have to really stumble on it like mm -hmm. that type of a chance encounter every year. Hundred percent. Yep. And then he was talking about all the local fish clubs, and I was like, this guy's insane. He's absolutely insane. There are clubs of people. She's not married to him. I know what you're thinking. That's <laughs> not who she ended up marrying. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are still friends though. And uh, your husband. No, this gentleman that I'm talking about. <laughs> very different person. I'm still very good friends with my wife. That's, congratulations. I see her occasionally. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's why, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, so he's just yammering on about these fish club meetings, and I didn't think anything of it. And then uh, it was winter time, so, you know, you're bored in the winter. Yep. And I don't think you know anything about that. Do you? No. Okay. Sunshine and pineapples every day of the, every day of the week in Canada. <laughs> And so I was bored and I looked up the club and it was Guava, the local plant and tank club. And I went to a meeting just mostly because I wanted to see what kind of crazy people would be at a fish club meeting. That's the Greater Washington Aquatic Plant Association. We'll put the, I'm going to put the logo up. I always put like logos and anything oh. we talk about. That's why there's always a space between us and stuff so I can always do stuff like that. He just like doesn't that. want to come yeah. near me. <laughs> Or vice versa. <laughs> right, and this is where the downward spiral yes, started? Yes, absolutely started there. Yeah. I took, yeah. Because we have meetings, Guava has meetings in members' homes, which is what's awesome about a small club, because then you get to see different people's aquascapes. And then you, everybody and starts tired. sharing and taking and cutting. That's really and like... Not cutting in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> but are you also, not, not just with... Aquatic plants. Are you the same thing with house plants? No, or like not so much. I mean, just I aquatic plants. That's I do it? keep plants, house plants, but I don't really have a, a nice southern facing window or any sort of yeah. nice environment to keep plants yeah. happily. I do have a lemon tree that I have been nursing along for a very long time. Yeah. I'm kind of proud of my. But lemon the tree. glass box with all the technology and the lighting yeah. available to us, you can do that. Yeah. And you do it well. All right. Yeah. Apparently. So you get into guapa. Yep. 
and falling down now. It's just yes. going completely downhill. This is Alice falling downhill. through the rabbit hole. 100%. Yep. How did we get to where we are now? Uh, that's a good question. So I started, we would have local conventions and we would have um, like aquarium beautiful contests where yep. you would, you know, set up your tanks in the lobby and then they judge them. And that hooked me hard. So the first time I did that, I don't even remember when it was, but I didn't win. And that was the motivator. Yep. So since then, I always had to. I like the blue ribbons. I'm sorry. I yep. like them better than the other colors. Well, and I, <laughs> again, as I don't know about the industry. I, I look at the aquascapes that come out when after they release the photos yes. every year, those yes. big, giant international contests. Yep. And some of them are like, Next I can't level. even fathom how they even came up with that. No. It looks like it was all molded. It looks like a set for a movie. Yes. <laughs> but it's yes. got water in it. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're incredible. The amount of talent that goes into those some of those tanks, it's just insane. But when it comes to a judging standpoint, I don't know, are you a judge for this stuff? Uh, this year I will be. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to a judging standpoint on this, because mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I was the head judge for this event for, right. for the fish and stuff, and I judge, I'm always asked to judge at different events when I go. But when it comes to something like that, it's all up to interpretation. Well, it's also it? up to style and tastes. Right. So there's a lot of that also. It's kind of like figure skating. Yeah. See, if you put six fire mouth cichlids, your favorite fish, <laughs> beside each other, you've got size, department, finish, color, all those different things you can go with. Yep. That doesn't work the same way in a planted tank. Not, you could say no. that general health of the plants, yes. or are they properly set up that they could thrive in that environment. Right. But. The actual layout is... Subjective, 100%. Okay, it is. Yep. 100%. And that's why you see a trend in a lot of these online contests towards the diorama style um, aquascapes, the, not the traditional Amano yes. nature scapes. Now, there's been a movement to get that back, which is awesome. But, um, yeah, and you follow a trend that wins. If you're a competitor, yep. that's what you do. So that's how that's kind of taken over. So I used to... Da I used to... I've, I just recently started going back into plants. When I moved, Aww. it was about five years hiatus when we moved because yep. we had the farm and a lot of new things. Right. Started recently setting up the tanks. I set up a 120 gallon tank because nice. I don't know how to do anything small. <laughs> and I had all my CO2 equipment. It's literally the only thing I kept was all my CO2 equipment. Very good. But when I did planted tanks years and years ago, in the, in the, all throughout the late, the early 80s and all the way into the mid late 90s, I always had a, a high-end planted tank with the, the, the powder dosing stuff, oh, the yeah, micronutrients, yeah, and yeah. I bought at a hydroponic store, yeah. and the CO2 and my own made diffusers that went in line. It's you fancy. Uh, but I also used the metal PVC halide. Pipes. Yeah, the PVC yeah, pipes yeah, yeah. with the little yeah, airline the, the, thing and the bio the balls bio inside. Yeah. Yep. But I used metal halide lighting. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, it was a triangle-shaped tank. The plants yep. came three feet yep. above the tank. But in my day now, with what I do in my livelihood for my job, right. traveling all the time or doing fish shows all the time or Hard. just life, you know, kids and yeah. farms and whatnot, yeah. if I go downstairs and all of a sudden it's like, holy man, there's like four hours of gardening all of a sudden. And that would be weekly when you were doing all that stuff. Well, and multiplied over multiple tanks. Yeah, I know. I only had the one really yeah. high-end planted tank, and yeah. I did a bunch of series of articles for one of those big magazines back in the day. It's mid-80s. I know it was mid-80s. and. I just, I loved it then, but right. now in today's day and age with all the kids, there's no way I could ever get back to it. You would really have to have it be established well enough that it could run itself. Yeah. And that's possible. Yeah. It's totally possible with a planted tank. But a planted tank at home totally runs itself now. But yeah. it's bulbitis and crinums and microsorium types and yeah. anubias and stuff, and it's all Easy. perfect. And that's fine. <laughs> and there's let them run rampant because they slow. Right, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. If that's your lifestyle and that's what you can keep up with, and it's still going to look good and you're going to want to look at it and work on it, and that's the key. Yeah. As soon as that's I started that up that 120, I went back to like the old school kind of Dutch style, yeah. and it lasted about two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I came back from so a work trip more. and I'm like, I just put that plant in. <laughs> And it's, it's everywhere now. It was insane. And I'm like, it's a two-week period or something. I, said, I, I can't keep up with this. Well, congratulations. Your plants were healthy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, never, I, I also was never one of those ones. That's not to discount the, or give, not give credit where credit's due mm -hmm. for some of the people. We have some pretty exceptional, like yourself, uh, not just aquascapers, but horticulturists or aquatic yes. horticulturists uh, like Tom Barr and some yep. of these people out yep. there. And I don't mean to just use him. There's lots of them. I just don't yep. know most of them personally. <laughs> but these guys have been such advocates for this industry that these Absolutely. guys have taken it to a level. It's almost like you're studying for 
your law degree <laughs> or studying to be your surgeon's test. Like these guys know their stuff. Yeah. Yep. I've been actually very fortunate because I fell into Guapa, which ha happens to have some of the most notable names in the hobby. Yeah. And we're all right here. We're all neighbors. And I got to kind of grow <laughs> neighbors. up with them. <laughs> yeah, we're all in this little cul-de-sac here. This is where we meet. <laughs> you know, you don't ask for a cup of sugar. You ask for some Stargyne. Yep. Now, are there different, because um, I don't know, when it comes to aquascaping, Yep. There's categories not just by size of tanks, but there's categories on styles. Are there set no. styles? Okay, sort of. Sort okay. of. Okay, that's very gray. So the different contests do it differently. Some of them have just by size of the tank, and some of them have different categories. So you'll have a Dutch category, because yeah. Dutch is just so far and beyond anything else. It's very it's specific, and it was, it's been rules. in terms for years. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, and that's a skill set, crazy skill set to do yeah. those tanks. That's amazing. Um, and then you only have, have one tank if you do those. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and um, you're retired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps live in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you've got your biotopes, which is a new class that started up recently, which is great because it's really awesome to see these tanks coming in with the, the I've biotope. I've seen that. There is a gentleman out of Poland or Russia that's running a biotope oh, group yes, or something. Yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. And yeah, lots of exceptional ones, but some of the tanks that come in, I'm like, I've never even heard of the country before, yeah. let alone the river and the fish. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and it's totally true. Uh, AGA started the biotope class a few years ago. I'm not really sure when it was, um, but that's been really neat to see. Now, unfortunately, we have to just um, throw out a lot of the entries because they're not true. Okay. Um, but it's still growing, it's still young, so yep. that's going to get there. Yep. And it's pretty exciting to watch. So we also this year added a Wabikusa. Class, which is cool because that's kind of the next step. They've got some pallet. What is a, what is the definition of a wabi kusa? It's a ball of dirt with plants on it in the middle of a in the middle of a puddle of water. <laughs> Guess we'll show you a picture of a wabi kusa and you guys will figure it out yourself. <laughs> There's a way better answer for that question, and I don't have it. Um, and we also have pal paladarium class, which is which is another that's trend. Too, yeah. yeah, that's a new thing yeah. that's really taking off. Well, that's the thing that's evolving with me, and my, my, my talk that I'm going to be doing later tonight is called Involve and Inspire, and there's a bunch of educational facets, but since I started doing the YouTube, I, I started evolving. It wasn't for YouTube that I started yeah. evolving. It's just my interest started evolving, and I go and see somebody set up, and like, that's kind of neat. I've never heard of that, yep. and then all of a sudden now I'm, you know, I'm totally derailing myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing all sorts of different stuff, and that's cool because yeah. that's what makes it different. Right. Now, are there certain, like when we talk about oh, styles, yeah, are there styles. certain styles that those are your go-tos, or do you like oh, yeah. pushing yourself out of the box? No. I have no interest in doing a diorama style tank, and I, I understand it, I appreciate the heck out of it, but it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, it's not your thing. It's not yeah. my thing. Um, so I'm straight up, I'm a nature scaper. I love the nature style tanks, yeah. and that's, that's, just what, that's what speaks to me. That's yeah. my jam. And is there, what, what kind of rules are in place for that? Or are there no there, rules? Or? I don't know. Specific rules? There's no rule book to this okay. stuff. Um, it's just being creative. Well, sure. All of it yep. is. It's all art. Yep. It's all art. Um, but the nature style is more like you're kind of just taking something that could be in a river somewhere yeah. and putting it in a tank. So it looks like... Yeah. You, ex you, you look at it and you think that sh there should be flow going this yeah, way or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. And the water would eddy around the rocks right. and stuff. Right. And this is where the plant would have tumbled down and gotten stuck and that sort of thing. That's really cool. Now, you guys are involved uh, with a much bigger organization uh, of some, some pretty amazing women, not just in North America, but globally. True. Right? Yes. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, Aqua Girls. So we, uh, Rachel and I and Esther Mouse, yep. who is Aquaflora lovely lady we love her to death uh, we were all at AE aquatic experience however many years ago and all sitting around we're, like, we're the aqua girls and we're like we are the aqua girls <laughs> yep. and it kind of started there and we, re we really realized that there's there needs to be more support there's so few of us um, and it's sometimes tough to get into a man's world yep. if you're shy and a lot of us are more shy or timid um, so it's nice to have a little for a few glasses of wine maybe <laughs> so, yeah. Rachel's shy. Rachel's really They're shy. They're very shy. Terribly shy. <laughs> Can't ever get her to open up. Now, how many members do you guys have? It's a, it's a small exclusive club, well, but it's, it's also, you're not excluding anybody. It's no, just, you are very anyone. supportive of each other right. and helping each other be creative. And right. I mean, we're still growing. We're yeah. still trying to figure out how exactly to do it. 
yeah. um, and do it properly. We have a group on Facebook that's not as active as we would like for it to be because all of us are very busy, unfortunately, which is kind of what the problem is. Yeah. Um, well, I, me and Jonathan Straczynski in Ohio started a group called the Do. Uh, uh, dudes in cichlid keeping. Of course we don't need to go any further. And uh, we actually have a slogan. Uh, unlike the babes who work for the yes. cichlid for the American Cichlid Associations, we provide absolutely nothing of value, <laughs> and we don't do anything. We have a T-shirt. Excellent. And we have a Facebook page. Yeah. Of which we post nothing, nothing. to. Sounds about right. See, we're Good solid. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Set the bar. That's how, that's how low the man's world can be. <laughs> and still successful. Yeah. Very good. Well so done. where are you going to go from here? Uh, next stop is I will be at Aquashella, which is in a couple weeks in I Chicago. I don't mean next week. No. I mean, where's Jen? What's Jen's always driving herself. Where's Jen going next? I don't know. I'm just I'm a competitor, man. That's, yeah. my, that's what I do. Um, I think Jen needs to go to Interzoo. Uh, Jen would or love one to of those go to big Interzoo. shows. One of those big shows. Because yes. when you go there... The aquatics are just so beyond over the top uh, yeah. that most of us can't even fathom. I've been there yeah. before and it's like, wow. Yeah. And Jen would also like to go to Europe or Asia or both because it's a whole different whole different take over there. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure. I, I interest you the first time I went. I say aquatics as a whole for the whole show, which is 13 pavilions. <laughs> uh, it's massive. You can't, you wouldn't be, even if you walked all three or four days that it's open, you would, and just at a, a good pace, you wouldn't see every booth. So that's I'm not fair, talking yeah. stopping. I'm just saying just walk Walking. through quickly yeah. to see if you could see every booth. You wouldn't see them yeah. all. But aquatics would probably account for 60 to 70% of it. That's incredible. Yeah. Aquatic reptile, like those like genres here, are kind of the together. The U.S. one? No, no. Oh, okay. The one in the U.S. is Super Zoo. Oh. That's in Vegas. The one in, in uh, Orlando is Global. Right, right Interzoo right. is the one that's in Germany, in Nuremberg, right. Germany, the every alternate one. year. Yes. Yeah, it's massive. In the U.S., you know, the market is different here. You it know, is. Everything's, everything, it in, is. Uh, especially in North America, everything's fast-paced and disposable, and Europe's never been like that. No, but also we're so spread out. Yes. We don't have the close-knit communities. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do it through our clubs, but they're so disjointed. Yeah. We don't have a common thread combining us all, which is, I think, another part of why we're on a different level. Yeah, and if you're in Europe, you can go from the Netherlands to Great Britain okay. to Germany, no problem. You can transverse all these things. For us, I've never personally been to an Aquatic Gardeners Association show. It's not for lack of not wanting to go, but it's really depressing to me that if I went and I'm inspired and I love all that stuff, oh, you can't get that in Canada. Yeah. You can't bring those There's plants that. back. You can't order those plants in Canada or yeah. that wood or that yeah. rock. You know, like Yeah, well, you be thankful you're not in Bermuda. Those guys can't get anything. Yeah, the plants there is yeah. challenging, it's isn't it? Terrible. <laughs> they got a very small yeah, list. Yeah, the list is like this long. This is what you can work with. Good luck. So it's been an absolute pleasure, yeah. Jen. I wish Thanks. you absolutely the best in everything you do. I love Thank following you. your stuff that you do. Thanks. Do you have a Facebook page or a web page or uh, something promoting G what you do? WD Aqua. Yep. That's me. Yep. Um, we will link it. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep. So you can find we'll me. We'll try and figure out. I got my daughter to help me link it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I try to keep it up to date with all of the uh, contests and, and whatever I'm up to. Um, also, you can contact me. I, I do a lot of traveling to speak to clubs. Yeah. So I do a lot of that, and I'm happy to do it. Store openings, demos, whatever you need. I think it's really important for us to get out there and, and share our knowledge. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So you got Aquashella coming up right yep. away. What are you doing at Aquashella? I am just visiting. Oh, no, that's not true. I'm going to be in the um, Oase BioOrb contest. So you are doing a display I again. Know. You're building again. I know. Yep. I was all excited that I was just going to be going for fun. No, you're so. not. You're excited to be building because if you're not be, if you're not building and being creative, that's not you. That's true. Yeah. That's fairly true. So, yeah. check but her then, out, guys. But then aquatic experience. That's another. That's big in one. Jersey. That's in. That's two weeks after the, after Aquashella. So the second weekend. She's busy. In, I am, and I'm going to be really tired. Yeah. And my home tanks are going to look terrible. Because <laughs> I won't be there to take care I'm of I'm sure it will. <laughs> I can show you pictures right now. Check her out, guys. <laughs> Jennifer Williams, design, top aqua girl, wonderful, wonderful person. Thanks, guys. Thanks.